I'm Luis Rufino, and I will be uh, testing the H BYU's H alpha and H beta filters. Uh, BYU claims that their filters can measure certain parameters of stars, as uh, metallicity, surface temperature, and surface gravity. Uh, whether this is accurate to the SDSS, uh, that is a question that I'll try to answer today. Uh, my star cluster is NGC 2158. It, has known to, it is known to have 62 stars. Uh, it's an open cluster. Fun fact is that our sun, astronomers think that it came from an open cluster because the orbits are so crazy that at any moment in time a star can just be shot out of the orbit. Um, as part of the Gemini uh, constellation, you can't really see it right now. It's, I think it's already past our, uh, the northern hemisphere. It's a pretty young star. It's about 2 billion years old. Uh, in perspective, the universe is 14 billion years old. And it's about 11,000 light years away. Um, just like I mentioned before, the SCSS gives us certain parameters, but we'll be looking at the surface temperature and metallicity and surface gravity. The surface temperature is just the temperature at the surface of the star. And the metallicity is the ratio of metal to hydrogen and helium. And the surface gravity is the gravity at the surface of the star, just like how the surface of the the gravity of the surface of the Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the H star di H R diagram, we'll come back to that later, but it's basically just a diagram to pick out where the stars hang in. So the H alpha filter is a very popular filter among astronomers. It is used to take really cool pictures of the stars, and you can tell a lot about it. You can really see it when it jumps, when the electrons jump energy levels from 3 to 2. And it has a wavelength of 400 and or 656 nanometers. This all, you, the H beta filter isn't as cool. You can't. I'm not sure if you can take cool pictures with the with the beta filter, but you do see it when it jumps from fourth to the second energy level. And it has a wavelength of 486 nanometers. Uh, so all the code is written by Jonathan Barnes, and this code sifted through all of the stars and gave us the H alpha and H beta spectrum lines. I went through all the stars and did the continuum line, as it is right there, and that I just picked through the local max of each peak, and once that was selected, it went through a normal, it tried to make it really close to one. After that was done, it processed through all the spectrum lines and gave us the data. Uh, I noticed that the H alpha and beta wide filters weren't that good. As you can see that there's a lot of stars here that aren't really close together, they're pretty much everywhere. But if you look at the H alpha narrow filter, you can, it's a lot better, uh, the stars are more clumped together. Um, what's interesting is that you can see that these stars here are s completely separated from the other group and they're pretty low in temperature while the rest are pretty hot. Looking at that, you can, I tried to make a correlation with the HR diagram to see if there was any correlation between these and this. And so with this right now, we can see that these seven dots are pretty low in temperature. So that could either mean that it's a main sequence, a red giant or a super red giant. So I found this research article from Indiana University that says that they found seven giant stars in these clusters, NGC 1817, 1883, 2141, and 2158. But this could mean that these seven red giants or possibly red giants are in all of these clusters or one, they have like one in each, but we can't really say for sure that these seven stars are a part of the red giants or the super red giants. So I'm concluding that these seven dots here are just a part of, uh, they're just super small stars, or not super small stars, they're just small stars with uh, low luminosity. Um, moving back to um, our data, I decided to look at uh, to compare my stars with everyone else's stars to see if it could change um, the linear fit line. And although we did fill a gap, 
there wasn't much change in the linear fit line. Basically stayed the same. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is just going back to the data we found and that they are consistent with uh, SDSS. Mm. All right, are there any acknowledgements from our classmates and Jonathan Barnes and also BYU? Any questions? I just I think it's because like it's it's a common filter used and like the wavelength is a lot longer so you could see more with uh, with that certain filter.